Lonely. I'm high. Bears. Lonely. I was high, rather. You were high. Yeah. Lonely is good, actually. Yeah. Intimidating. Yeah. All right. All right. Wild. Unexpected. Unexpected. Yeah. Um, so close. So close. Yeah. All of these. Uh, one of the early historical geographers, a, a Scottish clergyman by the name of George Adam Smith, who was so good at elocution, not just in the pulpit, but writing it down, uh, came here in the 1890s. Um, and when he stood at various points along the, like at Herodian yesterday, looking east, mm -hmm. at different points looking east, he likened this to being on the point of the ship he was on coming from Scotland, where the waves were doing this, right, in front of him. Uh, only now it's land doing that. In both cases, it's landscape you can't live in. You don't live in the waves in the open ocean. You don't live down here. Uh, both of them mitigate against permanent settlement. Both of them hold danger. Both of them, you can live if you know the skills. Certain kinds of survival skills, right? The sailor on the high seas or the camel caravan or the sheep and goat guys out here. But it's not a lot of people. You have to know the technology. You need to have the certain kind of backbone and spirit in all of this, don't you, to be out here. In the far distance, way up on the ridge, you see some houses. Yeah, way up there. Um, that's the last line of permanent settlement. The last line, based on normal rainfall. Once you come this side of that line of permanent settlement, the rainfall tapers off enough that you can't have enough guaranteed rain every year to grow wheat, which is the staple of life. So the land of the farmer ends there. The two towns you see closer with all the green trees are West Bank settlement towns where the water is pumped in in order to make a political claim and statement. So we have to pretend they're not there when you look at the way the land is actually working. All right. So the land, there we end, and then the wilderness begins, and it ends actually when you start to rise into Transjordan, were it not for an oasis. Jericho is an oasis. It's there only because the water is coming out as a spring. And that's the flat that you see. And all the houses on the flat just down below is Jericho. It's about a 10 mile run, dropping about 4,000 feet, but bumpy down, that we call the midbar, the step land, or the grazing land. By grazing, we mean where you don't have permanent agriculture, right? Uh, so, so the sheep and goat land, or if you want, the Bedouin land. Bedouin is a modern term. It's not a Bible term. Um, actually, the biblical term for Bedouin was Arab. Uh, the historic Arab population were Bedouin off the desert. The term has been made bigger now, but the historic term is that. So here you go. Grazing land. Yeah, You can't get Bedouin that. Oh. The landscape. Don't give right. up your day job. You got it? <laughs> I don't have a day job. Yeah. Right, there it is. When you look at when you look at, for instance, your map seven, and you can look in detail later, uh, you've marked Jerusalem on the map, and Jericho is a spot where you've got three natural routes coming down toward it. Uh, but between Jerusalem and Jericho even though you've marked routes on your map, there are no towns, as opposed to over here, where there's a lot of towns, uh, but no towns. There's a couple of dots with names in parenthesis, which become Byzantine monasteries. But again, they're trying to penetrate into the land in ways that are not, let's say, natural in terms of settlement. All right? So basically, the land is empty, and the map represents that. This zone, this wilderness zone, we talked about yesterday, this softer kind of limestone that doesn't hold water well, that doesn't have good soil, that doesn't have good building material. <coughs> Plus, it doesn't have good rainfall either. And this is the result. All right, this is the result. Now, 
what you're looking at as well is a very large, what we call a catchment basin. The water up here, and it all drains downward, a lot of little fingers coming in, into, and then it cuts a canyon that runs about 400 feet straight down and narrow. And you're catching, catching the top of that canyon right in through here. You can see places where the sort of the softer um, folds drop down, and then down here as well, before it dumps out to Jericho. That's where the flash flood stuff is, mm -hmm. all right? But that's also where, during the summertime, because of the shade, stuff doesn't all burn off, and you can get a bit of grazing land down there, a little bit of back eddies of pools and things. Um, and the sheep know where that is. You know, the shepherds know where those places are as you go. How do you get around out here? How do you get around? How do you move around a bit? On foot. Yeah, on foot what, or donkey, right? Camel if you're fortunate enough to have one. And the routes, the main connection points, the ones that you marked on your map, three of them coming out of Jericho, what they, what they do is they follow what we call the natural topography. And out here, it's going to be the tops of ridges or continuous ridges between the systems where the water runs. So look here, back this way, you see that higher point with a dirt path coming off of it? Right? Today that's made by four-wheel drives and all kinds of stuff, right? But you see that dirt path is hitting the very top, you see it? Yep. Top, top, and it's coming right at us. And you can see from that hill, things drop off steeply to the right, things drop off to the left. Compare that to the modern highway over here that has bulldozers, right? And earth moving, rock moving machinery that puts the modern highway in flat. This one is bendy and it's hilly, but you've got it, right? That's the natural route. That's the natural route. And you can track it on that line of ridge from Jerusalem to Jericho. Mm. You can track it the whole way. We call that a natural route. That has to be the natural road. In the time of the Bible, anytime you have somebody going between Jerusalem and Jericho, including track. David and Jesus, it has to be on this route. All right? Has to be. It <coughs> continues where we're standing right now. We're on that route. And then up this ridge, just behind you, and then it follows the top of these bumps. There's a high point out there before you drop down into Jericho. That high point was a Herodian fortress, like a, like the one we were in yesterday. And then straight down to Jericho. You can track it, there's a dirt path, you can walk it. We can walk to Jericho if you want to do nothing else today. Let's do it. Following it, all right? I mean, this is possible. And you can track it. Uh, in the second century AD, Rome paved it. They paved it with curb stones and flagstones and milestones because it became part then of the ro official Roman road network. After the Jewish revolt was lost, <laughs> right, by the Jews, uh, Rome came in and said, this is going to be official Roman territory. Enough of these, you know, Jewish petty kings like a Herod, you know, enough of them. Fully Roman. So it was sewn into the Roman road network as well between Jericho and Jerusalem. Troop movement. And yeah, for troop movement, as well as then everybody else, like the interstate highway system in the U.S. Eisenhower said troop movement, right. we use it too, right? Uh, and, and there are pieces of that still left. And that kind of verifies what our eyesight tells us anyway with the natural route going through. So I can't put an X on the ground for a lot of things that Jesus did and say it was there. But I can tell you that when he's walking from Jericho to Jerusalem, like on the way to the cross, he's coming up this ridge. He's coming up this ridge. So um, I would say right about where our friend is sitting here with the uh, kafia, that's right at the point where the road does this. This is where he walks. So go stand up there and you can say Jesus walked here. All right? <laughs> that's as close as I can get to where he is. All right, you with me so far? It's a really hard walk. It's about 10 miles, 7,000 feet up. That's going to be a full day. That's going to be a hard day. And so you're going to stop on the backside of the Mount of Olives on that first line of towns. See up there, that first line of towns? Mm -hmm. Just at the top there? 
going to stop there. This is going to become your home away from home. You're going to get to know people there, like Mary, Martha, Lazarus, Simon the leper. They live in Bethany. And then that last push over the top and into Jerusalem, you can do that tomorrow. It's, I've already walked from Jericho today. You can do that tomorrow. So that becomes his home base, Bethany, on the east side of the Mount of Olives after this walk. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. Want to read a little bit?